welcome back to another week of Sunday School Online. We're going to be continuing this probably for at least another uh, month. Uh, we want to shoot until the end of July, uh, but you know things might change, so uh, keep an eye out on that. But hopefully, I really do hope that uh, you guys will be able to go back to your Sunday School classes with your teachers, with your classes just share in uh, the fellowship, the learning, and, and just the discussion time that you can have, uh, because I really do believe that's very important. Uh, but for now, uh, I really do hope you guys are involved in uh, this process, Sunday School Online, talking with your teachers, talking with your classmates, uh, over phone, over Zoom, whatever it may be, and that uh, it is truly as beneficial as it can be. I understand that you know learning from this is never as easy as it sounds. And so, um, before I get on to announcements, I just want to thank you guys again uh, because you're putting in effort, you're putting in work, and I know it's not always easy. Uh, so, great job, and uh, let's uh, let's get some announcements out of the way, all right? So, this Thursday, we're going to do our Jerusalem, our Project Jerusalem, um, our Jerusalem Day, sorry. Uh, and that's basically a time for us to serve our community. Uh, I still have not heard back from the food bank uh, for a volunteer opportunity, and so... Um, plans may change we may have to move uh, some things up and shuffle it around to see if we can uh, find a different day to serve but I'll keep you posted on that so make sure that you're looking at our Facebook posts uh, that you are receiving our text messages and if you're not getting access to either of those please let me know because I, I want to make sure that you know you're being informed about what's going on um, July 8th through the 10th that's our youth retreat uh, make sure you have the paperwork if not uh, please 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 get it to me because today was actually the deadline uh, for t-shirt sizes but I'll take them all the way up until the end of the day uh, please uh, if you didn't get a form or if you weren't able to get one until today or even maybe Thursday um, if you are planning on going send me your t-shirt size so I can at least order a t-shirt for you okay uh, $70 per person and I need those forms in as soon as possible all right uh, let's see next announcement is um, our uh, I think that's actually it um, if you have anything that you want to share if you have anything that you want to talk about please let me know or let another uh, female youth leader no or male youth leader depending on who you want to talk to um, other than that uh, let's jump right into the lesson uh, so we've been talking all year about what it means to be a disciple what it means to live a, a life that's uh, devoted to Christ and devoted to building his kingdom and, and the qualities that a disciple has uh, but today we're going to talk about why it's so important to be involved in a community of believers. Uh, because it's very easy, especially with uh, all this online and um, te technological advancements that we have, to maybe diminish or look down upon the importance of a home church and being around uh, other believers. And... You know, it's a thought that I also had too when I was younger. I always asked, why do I have to go to church? Isn't, you know, my faith just something between me and God? Um, but that's absolutely not the case. You see, all throughout the Bible, God's never isolated uh, one of his people for too long. He's always put us in a community. He's always put us amongst other believers, other people that are sharing in the faith. And so... Um, we, we want to uh, talk about today about the importance and just the, uh, just the magnitude of what it, uh, the benefits and, and you know, the requirements of being in a community of believers. And so if we look back um, to the early church, the first church, 
they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to fellowship of breaking bread and praying for each other. And a lot of those things you can't really do um, on your own. I mean, you can break bread, but the, the term here for breaking of bread means that you share in, in your meals with other people. And so let's look on uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Um, as always, I want to encourage you guys to have a physical Bible with you. If you can, uh, pause this video, go and grab it, uh, whatever you need to do, okay? Uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47 is what it looks like, all right? And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and their fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers day by day those who are being saved so let's look at each of those things that we talked about and what does it mean for a Christ follower um, today to devote themselves to the teaching of God's Word okay. so that's the very first thing the teaching of God's Word means that they were just they're committed to Jesus's teachings they were committed um, to, to God's Word because that's where we find Jesus' teachings. And for us uh, to be uh, devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the teachings themselves, means that we have to be in our Bibles, we have to be studying, we have to be reading, and we have to, uh, to meditate on the Word. Um, the second thing, fellowship, what does that look like today? Uh, the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, uh, which means participating or sharing. Um, today, that's that looks like being involved in each other's lives, right? Helping meet physical needs if we can. Uh, the breaking of bread. Uh, this is a simple one, right? It could just be something as simple as sharing a meal together, or maybe participating in the Lord's Supper together, right? Think about how natural it is to just share a meal uh, with a friend, right? Um, and finally, being devoted to prayer. Uh, prayer back then most likely took a lot of place in uh, temples, uh, as well as in homes, and, and groups of believers would come together and, and just share and pray, uh, not only for themselves, but for each other, right? We should absolutely be praying at church, but we should also be praying in our homes. We need to make that a part of our daily and weekly routines within our homes. And so, something that you want to ask yourself is how well do you think churches, uh, or especially our church, um, devote themselves to these same things? Right? So think about what our church does to meet these uh, needs that, that people have, the, the, the teaching of God's word, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the devotion to prayer. Right? Think about ways that you could be involved in that. And so let's uh, look at verse 43. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And so is there a possibility that, that the things that we talked about just now and, and had an impact had uh, on them being in awe? Right. So being in awe means that you look at something and... and you just can't understand how awesome it is, how great it is, how big it is. And to see these disciples, to see these uh, people come together to just share their lives together, share their faith together, um, to just live for the kingdom of God, it set them in, it set them for the stage of being uh, in awe of the Lord, right? They were molding and cultivating their lives together, and so it makes sense that they were being prepared to see and do these amazing things that God had planned for them. But then we also have to look at uh, verses 44 through 47. Right, I'm not going to read that back for you. 
but there was a lot of intentional uh, time spending together, right? Giving generously, even sacrificing our their own comforts, their own things to to help others and meet their needs. And so this is something that is very difficult for us to do, especially in in this time when we have so much more than historically anybody's had uh, before. And so this communal lifestyle um, can be kind of hard to accept, especially the way that it's written as it is. Right? There might be some concerns that you have. And so uh, discussion question one right, would be what part of living our lives like this do you find the most difficult? So I want you to be able to talk that over. Um, and the second discussion question would be what part of living like this kind of excites you, makes you excited for uh, the possibility of it? All right, verses 44 through 47. If you, if you read it again, think about just some parts of this that you might find difficult and some parts that you might find enjoyable. Now let's look on chapter 2, verse 47, uh, the second part of it. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So what is it? what do you think about the fact that you know, the Lord came, uh, made people come to them and, and just grow day by day. And what does it look like? What would it even seem to look like? You know, it, it would be exciting, wouldn't it? It would be amazing to see every day someone new coming to know and, and, and uh, just share in, in the gospel that is Jesus Christ. But why do you think we don't see that happening today? Why do we not see uh, people being brought to Jesus on a daily basis today? Do you think there was maybe a difference in strategy? Maybe a difference in technique? So what do you think the disciples did back then that we're not doing now that gave them results that we're not getting? The answer is there was no strategy. They didn't have some fancy plan. They didn't plan revivals. They didn't plan uh, these events where we go to amusement parks or go to a cabin. They didn't need any of that. All they did was they simply devoted themselves to God and to the Word and to each other, and it just took uh, just waited until people took notice of it. So what encouragement does that give us today? That gives us the encouragement of saying, hey, we don't need uh, these cutting edge strategies. We don't need these lures and we don't need to bait people into the church. We need to show them the, the benefits of it. We show them the, the blessings that we receive on a daily basis on, on just us living our lives for Christ and for each other. Just the fact that we're able to help each other out at our darkest times and to be able to lift each other up out of those things through Christ, it should be more than enough evidence um, and proof that people need. So, I want you guys to think about this week uh, the things that you've been missing, the things that you really wish that we could get back to doing that we normally did. You see, you don't really notice how good something is until it's gone. And I think that's one of the things that God's given to us through this crisis is an opportunity to reflect on the fellowship that we normally share, on the community that we normally have, and just the value of it, just the importance of it. Because I realized almost immediately, hey, I miss being with everybody else. I miss being with you guys. I miss hanging out with you guys. I miss teaching, sharing in moments, and just fellowshipping with you guys. And I do hope that that's something that you've also come to realize through this break as well with each other. So let me pray over you, and then we'll wrap it up. All right, Father, we just thank you that you don't make us live our lives by ourselves. That you don't expect us to to fight our temptations, to fight the struggles, to fight the sin of this world 
on our own, Lord. You call us together, not as individuals, but as a family, as a body of Christ, Lord. I pray that um, that we cherish that, that we honor it, and that uh, through us, not as individual, uh, individuals, but as a whole, that your kingdom uh, be built here, Lord. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Love you guys.